grace to you, mercy, and peace, and all the blessings of heaven through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Not everyone's going to buy what you're selling. Now that's an anecdote I wish I had learned earlier in life. I was in my first parish, and while things were going well, I felt like we could be doing a better job of outreach. In fact, we should be doing a little bit better job of outreach. It was a very small town, and there were three other churches, but I kept running into people who had neither a relationship with Christ nor a church home. In fact, we had a agnostic biology teacher that lived right across the street from the parsonage. We used to go play golf all the time. But he didn't know much about Christ and didn't seem fairly interested. I knew we could do a better job. I knew we should do a better job. And so I began to diligently search through the scriptures and read over and over again all the passages that call upon us to share the gospel, both with our words and with our deeds. I even found passages in the Lutheran confessions that talk to the matter of outreach and evangelism. And I found all kinds of things from former and current teachers of the faith talking about the need to, to be people of evangelism and outreach. And I put together a presentation, a solid presentation, and I made that presentation to the congregation and to my astonishment, people, some people said no. Now, what I just ran headlong into is what's called the diffusion of change. And what that means is across the world's population, people respond to change differently. 5% of the world's population are the actual innovators and change agents that exist. They're the ones that come up with the ideas. They're the, the Teslas and the Elon Musk and the Jeff Bezos and those guys. And then there's about another 15% that see that idea and snap up to it and begin to support it. So 20% of change comes out of the minds and efforts of 20% of the people of the world. And then there's about 30% of the world that they're fast adapters. They hear it, they think it through, yeah, let's do it. And then there's another 30% that are, are late adapters. I'll believe it when I see it. But no matter what, there's about 15 to 20% of the world's population that they're going to say no, no matter what it is or who even brings it up. If Jesus came up with an idea and presented it, there would be 20% of the world's population going, uh, 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 uh. That's the diffusion of change. Once I understood that, then I realized the truth of not everyone's going to buy what you're selling. And I could be at peace with that. I know that no matter what I do, I'm going to have opposition. And that's okay. They just are who they are, being the way that they are. This morning, our text is taken from what's called Jesus' high priestly prayer. Now, if you'll recall, he's in the Garden of Gethsemane. In a few moments, he's going to be betrayed into the hands of the religious types who have been led to his capture by Judas Iscariot. The rest of his disciples are laying around sleeping. You know, they're so uh, into it. Matthew tells us that he prays that the cup be taken away from him, but then says, Father, whatever your will be done. Luke tells us that he was under such torment and emotional strain that blood was pouring out of the pores of his forehead as he prayed. But John, led by the Holy Spirit, tells us what he prayed. And so if you turn to John chapter 17, or if you just turn to your gospel reading, once again we hear the word of the Lord. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, 
that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of this world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you have sent me. Now pay close attention here. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. Did you catch that? I'm praying for them. I'm not praying for the world. Now Jesus has come to save the world. His hour is coming to a close. His time is being fulfilled. He's going to be arrested. He's going to be tried. He's going to be taken before Pilate. He's going to be condemned. He's going to be crucified. He's going to be dead within the next 24 hours for the sake of the world, for the sake of the people, all the people for whom he came, to pour out his blood and sacrifice to cover our sins so that when God looks down on mankind, he doesn't see the sinfulness of the world. He sees Christ's blood. But not everyone is going to buy what you're selling. Even though Jesus is doing this for everyone, he knows not everyone's going to believe and trust in him. Not everyone are going to be people of faith. Even though he's going to suffer every stripe, every blow of the hammer, and the crushing of the thorns upon his forehead, for everyone... Not everyone's going to come to faith. Not everyone's going to believe. Not everyone's going to trust. And therefore, not everyone is going to be saved. But for those of us who do believe and trust and are people of faith, he comes, he dies, and he's raised again for our salvation. I pray for them, he says. In our psalm for today, notice that there are friends of God, but there are also enemies of God. It's always been that way. God shall arise, his enemies shall be scattered, and those who hate him shall flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so you shall drive them away. As wax melts before fire, so the wicked shall perish before God. But the righteous shall be glad. They shall exalt before God. They shall be jubilant with joy. I do not pray for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. Now that flies in the face of a popular opinion. That is, everyone goes to heaven. You've heard it. You may have actually wanted to say something and then you thought, nah, this is like saying something on Facebook. It's going to go all over the place and mean nothing. I'll just keep quiet. But there are people who have heard the story about Jesus and somewhere in their minds, they've come to believe, well, if Jesus died for the sins of everyone, it doesn't matter what I do, it doesn't matter what I don't do, because everyone's going to get to heaven, right? And the answer is, no, that's not true. 
And it's not that God does not love the world. I mean, after all, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life, right? So it's not that Jesus didn't come to save the whole world and everyone in it, every man, woman, and child, everyone who had come before, everyone who was currently living, everyone, all the generations yet to come, Yes, Jesus came to be the Redeemer. Jesus came to be the Savior for everyone. But not everyone believes. Not everyone trusts God at His grace. Not everyone is a person of faith. And so not everyone goes to heaven. Those who believe, trust, have faith. They are saved, not because they're good people, not because they're at least a little bit better than the person next to them people. There are all kinds of people out there. There are people that we think, hey, they're good people. They got a good heart. But that's not what makes the difference. Is how do we relate to our Lord Jesus Christ? And how do we relate to God as his people of faith? Go back earlier, what does he say? This is eternal light, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And Jesus this morning says, I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I'm glorified in them. And I'm no longer in the world. In other words, he's already seeing past the cross, past his resurrection, past his ascension. I am not in the world, but they are in the world. We are still in the world. And I'm coming to you, Father. So, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. So what about the rest of the world? What about the rest of the world that Jesus here is not praying for? Good luck, good riddance? No. What is the purpose of God's people? People who know the gospel, who've been given the gospel, and who then share the gospel. The call upon people of faith is no different today than it was 2,000 years ago. When Jesus says, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth, We are people who have been brought to faith by the Holy Spirit working through God's Word, bringing faith to our hearts, empowering and encouraging that Word and its faith through baptisms, connection to Jesus, through the Lord's Supper where we are nourished and encouraged and strengthened in the faith. People of faith who have the good news to be shared. Not just to be believed and trusted and held tightly and embraced, but to be shared in our words, by our deeds. In this way, there are people who may not be of the faith right now. But by coming in contact with believers who live their faith, don't just talk their faith, they too can come to faith. In other words, we have the opportunity of making heaven a little bit bigger tomorrow by what we do today. Loved by Jesus, we love in Jesus' name as we talked about last week, right? I pray for them. 
And what does Jesus pray? That we would be kept in the Father's name and that would we, we would be one even as Jesus and his Father is one. So with one voice, in one heart, one mind, as Paul tells the Philippians, let this mind be in you just as it is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk for the simple matter that in sharing the gospel, others too could be those for whom Jesus cares and for whom Jesus prays. And all God's people said, Amen. Please rise.